Hey everybody, welcome back. We are here in Princess Juliana with the Cows DA42 and there are a trove of updates from Navigraph, both for Flight Sim 2020 and 2024. But the exciting stuff for 2024 is that a lot of the technology that was available for Flight Sim 2020 or is available for Flight Sim 2020 is now available in 2024 and out of beta for Flight Sim 2024. We have updated versions of the in-game panel, the G1000 plugin, the G3000 and 5000 plugin, updated EFB integration with the EFB in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, and an update to the SimBrief dispatch in Flight Sim 24. That is now out of beta. So let's take a look at all this really great stuff. So first of all, how do we get our greedy little hands on this? We get it all through the Navigraph Hub. You can see all of the various options here. You'll have updates for, as I said, the G1000 plugin, the 3000, 5000, the G3X plugin as well, I forgot to mention, the in-game panel, and SimBrief Dis Dispatch. Updates for both 2020 and Flight Sim 2024. And as I said, the EFB integration is now out of beta version 1.0. So what does this all give us? This is the avionics plugin for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And you can see what it does, it integrates the charts right into your G1000, G3000, et cetera, in the sim. See over here on the right-hand side, you've got the approach plate in the G1000. Over here in the G3000, you can see the chart here integrated into the MFD. Another important thing, there is Xbox compatibility, which is fantastic for Xbox pilots. And of course, you can import all of your flight plans into your onboard avionics via the SimBrief plugin. So this is an easy way for you to be able to create flight plans either in SimBrief or SimBrief Dispatch, as I'll show you shortly, and just import those directly into your avionics without having to enter everything manually. So here we are back in Flight Sim 2024, and you can come up here and click on the in-game panel, and it will open up your Navigraph charts. Got here a whole list of the flights that I've been doing recently. I'll take a quick look at one I did yesterday. And this is a flight I did yesterday in the DA-42 from Providencialis down to Princess Juliana Airport. And obviously this is resizable. I've got this open big so I can show you everything on here. So you can see it's got the weather the departure and arrival runways. It's got your approaches. You can select your approach. It shows you all the different options that you have. For my particular case, I would have flown the RNAV 1.0 from Gouda. If you click on that here, it's going to show it to you. And it'll highlight it here on the left-hand side. We've got all of our charts. And here's the RNAV 1.0 approach from Gouda into Princess Juliana. So we're all pretty much familiar with this those of us who are using the in-game charts from Navigraph, if you are not, this is such an amazing option. And I'll tell you what's great about it. Number one, you have, instead of the Lido charts or the Lido charts that are in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, it's fantastic that we have a free option. So the, the Lido charts are free with Flight Sim 24. The problem with the Lido charts is they are for air carriers. They are for part 121 operators who are flying into major airports, there are no GA approaches, no GA only airports included in the Lido charts. Lido charts are for airlines. So if you're flying into your local county airport with you know, your Piper Comanche, you're not gonna have those approach charts with Lido. With Navigraph, you have everything. So my home airport, is Kilo Romeo Mike Echo, that's here in upstate New York. And here we have all of the approach charts for my local county airport. So this stuff is not going to be available to you in Lido. This is a huge advantage that we have with Navigraph over the standard charts in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. Navigraph is by far and away better. So we've got all of this great stuff here in the Navigraph Charts app. But what's new, first of all, this app has been updated, but second of all, the next thing that we're gonna take a look at here is the EFB integration. Down here along the bottom, I've got my Navigraph Charts, and I've got the same thing that we were just looking at. 
this is that same flight that we were looking at that I did yesterday. And if you want to, you can do the same flight planning right here in the EFB. Select your approach, just like we were doing before. The RNAV 1.0 from Gouda. One click, we have access to the chart. Same thing as we have in the Navigraph Charts app. I kind of like the Navigraph Charts, Charts app better, but we've got all this information right in here, which is great. What's really, really neat, and now this is out of beta in Flight Sim 24, is the SimBrief Dispatch. Now, you saw out here, we're looking a little bit gray. It's looking a little bit gray and cloudy. It's been this way the last couple days down the island. So we're going to do an IFR flight from here down to Guadalupe Point of Pete Airport, which is one of my favorite places to fly to. So we'll do the, the flight planning right in here. So we'll enter our departure airport, TNCM, and our arrival, which is TFFR. I'm going to do an automatic alternate. This airplane, the DA-42, is available in SimBrief. So it's got all of the climb, cruise, descent, everything else. But here's a scheduled block time, departure, and arrival runways. I'm going to put in my own altitude because I want to know. SimBrief, usually, if I don't put anything in this for altitude, it'll give me like 7,000, which is too low for this airplane. This airplane should fly a little higher. So I'll put in my, uh, my uh, altitude. Everything else is automatic. And you can see here, we got the Motor 2 departure, Alopo, and you and PPR. I know this flight plan because I've flown it a million times, but you can look, you can select your different flight plans down here. Sometimes, so these green ones are real world flight plans. So this is an actual real world, real world flight plan, easy for me to say. Sometimes you'll see like, a, I think it's blue, it would be a, uh, it would be a VATSIM flight plan. You can also generate custom routes and that sort of thing. But here we have the flight plan that as we have it now, the Motor 2 departure down over Antigua, the A and U V O R, and then down here to Point of Pete in Guadalupe. So that looks all good to us. So everything looking good. I do want to put in my registration, which is November 4 2 Mike Romeo. So we'll do that. And another interesting thing you can do actually as well is comp compare flight plans. So I was telling you earlier how this generally flight plans a, a little lower than I would actually like it to. I'm gonna click on compare and then it's gonna tell me to change your flight options to compare the results. So this is what I've got right now. If I close that and come down here and let it automatically choose my altitude, now I'll come back up here, click compare again, and see what it's done is it's flight plan for flight level 070, which is 7,000 feet for the rest of us. And it shows you what the differences are in the airtime. You can see there it takes two minutes longer, which is obviously no big deal. Uh, about seven gallons more fuel. And I need about eight gallons more block fuel for this. And you can see you hover over it and you'll see the totals. Really pretty cool. So I'm going to take the 15,000 feet because it's just going to be what I want to do here. And then you come up here to generate. And it's going to generate your flight plan. Now there's a couple of things we can do. We can look at the v the PDF and this will launch it in our web browser. And what that's going to do is give us the printout, the operational flight plan that you would normally take with you into the airplane. So now that we've generated the route, if we come down here to the flight planner, the EF this is the regular EFB flight planner for the sim. You can either load a flight plan that you've created yourself and saved somewhere on your computer, or if you just use the dispatch, just like we did, the SimBrief dis dispatch, it'll load it right here. And then what you can do is send the route to the avionics. And so here's the flight plan that we came up with. We'll click here on send route to avionics and nothing happens, which is fairly typical, unfortunately right now for Microsoft Flight Simulator. But what we can do is if we press the flight plan button again to get rid of that, and you see we click there on the charts button, and now we've got our Navigraph charts here in the plane. And there's a number of neat things we can do. First of all, let's let's look at an approach plate first. 
and this is the RNAV10 approach, now there's a couple things you can do. We click here on chart options here at the bottom. If you want to look at just this header information a little bit more closely, click the header button and you get a bigger version of that. Now we can see the final approach course, the glide slope intercept, the minimums, airport elevation, etc. We want to see just the plan part of the approach. Like if we're actually flying it and we're coming in here from Gouda, coming to Avaki, you want to see a closer version of this. You can see it a little bit better. Click on that. For planning, we've got our profile view right here. Avaki at 2600, inbound to Lessor, come down to 17. 096, three degree glide slope down here to the missed approach point. And then we have our minimums, which is 700 feet constant descent final approach. Now let's talk about getting the flight plan into the avionics itself. Then to get the flight plan that we've created here in Simbrief Dispatch into the avionics, you come down here, you rotate the big knob on the G1000, and this map, this menu comes up, rotate our way over to FPL for flight plan, and then we press this button, and this is what we're looking for, TNCM, TFFR, and now it's blinking, and you come down here and press activate. It's gonna ask you if you want to, it's gonna ask you to confirm, hit enter, and here we have the flight plan. So now the entire flight plan is in our G1000, and you can see here what we've got. It's got everything loaded, it's got the departure loaded. If we had selected an approach, it would have loaded the approach as well, but I didn't take a look at that before we did the flight plan. It's all integrated. It should be integrated a little bit easier with the flight planner. You should theoretically just be able to press this send route to avionics button and it should just go right in. That'll come at some point, but with Navigraph, you can do it itself. Now to log into your Navigraph account in the G1000 anyway, you come here and you rotate this knob again. You come over to Auxiliary. And then you can see here are our Navigraph settings. Just press this button right here. And if you do not have your QR code for you to scan, you scan the QR code in your phone or your iPad going to open a browser window, you sign in, click OK, and you're all set to go in the G1000. Now here we are in the TVM 930, and the, this is the G3000 suite. This is so much better. It's even better in this. If you click here on Simbrief in the MFD home section, click on Simbrief, and it's going to bring up a list of all of my Simbrief flight plans. So this is the one that we just created. It's already integrated into the system, but if I wanted to, just click Request. It says In Progress, Ready for Import. Click Import. Voilard, it is done, and you can look right here and see every part of the waypoint and you, the PPR. Get down here to the destination. If we want to, we can add an approach. Click here on Procedure. And if we want to, we can add an arrival. That looks good to me. And then we can also add an approach. I would take the RNAV Zulu 1, 2. And we'll do vectors, load and activate. So it does a really, really good job of integrating everything very, very easily into the G3000. Now, if we come back here to the home page for the MFD, if you click down here on utilities, and then lower right on setup, and then down here on Navigraph settings. So this is where your Navigraph account is. So again, this is where you'd log in if you're not logged in already. And if we come back here to flight plan, click on the approach, click here on show chart. Now we've got the chart here. We can open it up here in the PFD, or the MFD, excuse me. And we can see the chart. Now if we click here on chart options, Again, you can see just the plan view if you want to, or you can see the profile view, or you can see the minimums, the header, etc. You could do your flight planning here in your browser. I find it actually a little bit easier 
particularly to look at the different routes and the different options. You can generate your flight and then you would be able to open it in the EFB or you'd be, you'd be able to open it in the charts app in either sim. What I kind of like about the desktop, quick and easy to pre-file it on the network if I, I'm flying on BatSim, for example. The desktop app, in, import our flight plan from SimBrief. And here we have it in here. We've got our charts. Now we can look at the various arrival options. I find it a little bit easier, especially complicated arrivals. For example, here it's pretty straightforward arrival, but it's I find it a little bit easier in the desktop app to do this. And we'll select our approach. That was the uh, RNAV Zulu that I think we were going to that we were going to fly. And then of course we can find out that the RNAV Zulu is not the best one to fly, and what we'd actually probably prefer to fly. And then from the looks of things, we're probably just going to have to come here from Bimbo and intercept the final approach course for the approach to 1 to the RNAV Zulu. But anyhow, everything is integrated. The desktop app, the SimBrief website, the EFB for Flight Sim 24, and, tw and, and the Charts app for 2020 and 24, all the avionics, the G1000, G3000. So all of this amazing technology at our fingertips, being able to get these charts and get all this uh, planning and integration into the avionics, absolutely fantastic. Huge upgrades from Navigraph. Anybody who doesn't have Navigraph, it's, it's up to you whether you want to get it or not. Personally, I'm an instrument rated pilot in real life. I use Jeppesen charts in my real life flying. Navigraph is the greatest thing since slight spread as far as flight planning goes and, and the charts and all the integrations. If you guys have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to put them in the comment section below. I hope everybody's having a great day, and we'll talk soon.